We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Want to find out how you can stop your mates from simply picking up something off the floor? We're going to show you. Zon, to do this trick, I'm going to need some money. Oh, all right. But it's my lunch money. I'm going to need it back. Well, I tell you what, Zon, you can have it back if you can pick it up off the floor. If you don't pick it up, I get it. Sounds quite easy. I got it. That was a rubbish trick. Who thinks that was a rubbish trick? Me! Yeah! All right, Zon, well, we'll do it again. This time, you won't be able to pick up the money. So go and stand against the wall. And now, keeping your feet where they are, I just want you to bend down and pick up the money. Come on, Zon, pick it up. Chris, what have you done? Ah, I can't get it. That's hard. <laughs> so it looks like I get the lunch money, doesn't it? <laughs> Come on, then. Let's see if anyone else can do it. He can't. <laughs> She definitely can't. So why can't anyone, including Zand, pick up the money? <laughs> when you bend over, your bum pushes back, and the wall's stopping it from pushing back. George has got it. <laughs> Normally, when you bend over to pick something up, your body will adjust itself backwards in order to balance it out. So when your body's flat against the wall, you can't go backwards, and there's no chance of picking up that money. All you can do is fall forwards. So I'm going to need the money back from all of you guys. Give me my money back! Come on, Zand! We've got some incredible body tricks for you to try out. Want to fool your mates into thinking you have amazing magical powers and can levitate off the ground? Then take a look at this. So for this trick, I'm going to show you how to fly just a little bit. Now, what I need is your help. I'm going to be using real magic, but the louder you scream, the easier it is for me, OK? So I need a bit of encouragement. I'm going to get over here, I'm going to turn my back to you, and then you've got to start cheering when Chris says go. All right, Chris? OK. Three, two, one. Come on, son! Come on, Tony! Fly! 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 That is really good, actually. Oh, it's tiring doing all this flying. So who thinks they know how I did it? Standed on your toes and lifted this foot up. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, that's about right. So what I'm doing is I'm standing on one foot, on the balls of the foot, and lifting up the other one. The most important bit of the trick is to position yourself so the person can't see your other foot. So you've actually got to be quite far away from people when you do the trick. Who wants to have a go? So with this trick, you need to make sure you give yourself a bit of distance from you and your audience. With your back slightly turned to them, put your feet together and balance all your weight onto just one foot. From that angle to your amazed audience, it looks as if you're hovering above the ground. It's tricky, but worth the practice to impress your mates. How does that look? Does it look like he's levitating? No. No? He's not using real magic, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your mates. Want to fool your friends into thinking they're falling through the floor? Well, we're going to show you how. So, we've got a really good trick for you. Zan, I want you to lie on the ground. <laughs> OK, you comfortable? Very comfortable. So, Zan, I want you to give me your feet. Yeah. And I'm going to make your feet feel as if they're going through the floor. No, you're not. This floor's solid. Give me your feet. His feet are this good. Can everyone else smell Zan's feet? Zan, close your eyes. And I'm going to slowly, slowly lower your feet. And it's going to feel like I've got these guys to dig a hole under your feet. They're digging holes. I can't hear any digging holes. How close do you think your feet are to the ground? Probably about 10 centimetres off the ground. 10 centimetres? More like 50 centimetres, but let's keep going. OK, they're right about to touch the ground now. No, they're not. Whoa, they're going through the floor. Whoa, whoa! His feet haven't even touched the floor yet, but Zahn thinks they're falling through it. Oh, that's really weird. They're through the floor. Time for <laughs> this lot to have a go. Ten centimetres. So why do your legs feel like they've gone through the floor when they haven't? It felt like when you was laying down, like, all the blood was, like, draining from your lower um, part of your body. So it felt like your legs were getting numb. Well, Olivia's on the right lines, but there's more to it than that. 
When Chris held my legs up, the nerves in my joints relaxed and stopped telling my brain where my legs were. And having my eyes closed meant that when he lowered them again, my confused brain tried to work out the position of my legs, but kept getting it wrong. And that's why it felt like they'd fallen through the floor. When it was nearly touching the floor, it felt like I was really under. Try it yourself and see if you can feel it too. We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Here's a good one to wind your mates up with. Who wants to learn a trick? Me! Yeah! Me! OK, so I'm going to show Zond, and I want you guys to watch, and then you're going to do it. So we're going to get Zond on. So if you're cheering a football team, OK, really, really get your hands yeah! revving up like this, so quick as you can. Really do your hand hard, like this, hard as you can, so your arms starting to really ache. Keep going, Sandy. And when I say, what you can do is you're going to put your hands together like that and put your fingers apart. OK, okay. ready? Three, two, one. one, go. I'm trying to stop my fingers touching, but I can't. Yeah, that's really weird. And what happens? And my, this finger's moving towards that one. Does it work for everybody? Let's have a go. Yo. The most important thing is to really wind your arm up as hard as you can. Then put your hands together, fingers apart, and watch what happens. One finger should start curling toward the other. What do these guys think? It works. Well, everyone seems to know how to make it work, but does anyone know why it works? When your hand is in the fist, it gets used to being in the fist, so when you do your fingers like that, it will curl back in because it's used to being like that. Simeon's bang on. Because you're winding your arm, you have to clench your fist really tight, and the muscles to those fingers get used to contracting. So when you stop and put your hands together, that finger wants to keep on squeezing. So you've got to make a tight fist for it to work. If you let your wrist go all loose, the fingers will fly off. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Everyone's going to want to try this one. We've got a really tasty trick for you, and I'm going to use Zand as my first volunteer. So you fancy a donut? Oh, lovely. No, 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 it's not how the trick works. You've got to slow down. So what we're going to do is we're going to give Zand this donut, which is covered in sugar, and Zand, you've got to eat the whole thing without licking your lips. You think you can do this? Yeah, that's easy. I could do that all day. OK, ready? Here we go. There's the donut. Now, let's see if Zand can eat his donut without licking his lips. Difficult. You're doing quite well so far, Zand, but can you keep it up? No, oh, you've licked! Oh, look! <laughs> Who thinks that they could do the trick well? Me! What, you think you're better than me? Yeah! Well, let's see how this lot get on. <laughs> They're trying very hard, and so far, no one's licked. You're going to lick soon. You're going to lick soon. Sooner or later, it becomes too much to resist. <laughs> He's licking. She's definitely licking. And so is he. So why is it so hard to resist licking the sugar off your lips? <laughs> when the jam and sugar was on your lips, it was sort of irritating. You wanted to get rid of the irritation and wanted the tastiness of it. Charlie has almost got it. Your lips have more sensory receptors than pretty much anywhere else, making them super sensitive to even the smallest bit of sugar. So, as soon as the receptors feel something touching them, they tell your brain to remove the irritation. That's why you lick your lips. But it's not just that you get the tasty treat of having all the jam and sugar on your lips, but you also... What's on? What's she doing? I'm just practicing. <laughs> We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Now, the next one might get you all feeling a little sleepy. We're conducting a little experiment. We're going to yawn. Ugh. And just look what happens. That's one. Two. She's trying not to. Ugh. Oh, he's yawning again. Four. Five. 
Got you. Six, seven, eight, triple whammy. Are you yawning at home? It's a yawnorama. Is this boring? Hands up if you yawned. Me. So when we yawned, they yawned. Who thinks they've got a good explanation about why they yawned? I think yawning is um, a contagious disease because when one person does it, another person does it, then another person does it, and it just keeps on going. It's a good theory, Giuliano. We see someone looking tired and we think, I must be tired because they look tired. Another good theory, Charlie. So we've got all sorts of different explanations. And the really disappointing thing is that scientists and doctors don't know why we yawn. How about that? <laughs> they really cheated, like, what? what? Well, it's true. The human body's an amazing thing, but sometimes doctors like us just don't know why things happen. Some experts think that yawning may have developed as a means of communication, telling everyone that you're tired, just like Charlie suggested. Or some think that when you're bored or tired, a big yawn will help you take in more oxygen, keeping you alert and awake. Whatever the reason, make sure you try this out on your mates. But don't do it when you're in class. You might get in trouble. <laughs> We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Want to make your arms float all by themselves? Well, that's what this lot are trying to do. Come on, Paul, push harder. Believe it or not, their arms are rising up completely on their own. They just like go, Whee! It's making my hands move. When I go like this, it rises. I actually feel like my hands are rising up. That's quite weird. So how is this possible? And what do we do to make it happen? First, you need to push your hands against each other like this. With the person on the inside pushing out and the person on the outside pushing in. Do this really hard against each other for as long as you can. Then let go, and the person with the arms on the inside needs to relax and then see what happens. Now, who thinks they can explain why it worked? If the person's putting pressure, like, it's pushing, and then you're pushing really hard back, if they let go, like, really quickly and you're still pushing, your arms will just go, like, bounce and they'll go up. Well, Lorenzo is right. Because your arms are pushing so hard against your partners, when you stop, it takes your arms a little time to relax and realise that the force has gone and this is what makes your arms float. Right, so what happens is you're tensing all your muscles and then when you relax, the muscles that were tense are still pulling your arms up. So all these muscles that have been tense, you're relaxing the push in and the, the muscles that are on the outside of your arms are still quite tense and they're just making it feel like your arms are lifting up. He thinks Lorenzo's explanation was better. <laughs> OK, you're right. Lorenzo was better. Body tricks for you to show your friends. Want to find out how you can stop your mates from standing up straight? Well, we're going to show you. I have an amazing trick to show you. Who wants to see it? Brilliant. OK, Chris, you ready? Yeah, I'm really ready. Right, what I want you to do is go and stand and face that wall. OK. OK, face the wall. Mm -hmm. Cross your arms across your chest and then bend over and so that your head's touching the wall. Brilliant. OK, and now try and stand up again. That was rubbish. That was easy. Even these guys are going to be able to do that. Chris, I haven't finished the trick. Oh. OK, bend down, fold your arms, bend over, touch your head against the wall. And now just take one step back. And now try and stand up. Oh, I'm stuck. As soon as I move my feet back, I, I just can't stand up at all. <laughs> Who thinks they can do a better job than Chris? Oh, you all think you can do it, yeah. can you? Yeah. Let's see, shall we? One, two, three, go. Uh, yeah. Epic fail. She can't do it. It's oh, easy, right? No, neither can he. Good effort, though. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> so why is it that no one can simply stand up straight? Even I can't do it. It was my idea. Oh. Who can tell me why it was so difficult to do? Jessica. Because when you're bending and you take a step back, like, there's less weight here, and because you're leaning on the wall, like, more of your weight goes over there. Lovely. Who else has got another, a nice explanation then? Ella. It's 
hard as well because you're leaning back on your tiptoes and your muscles are stretched and you can't really stand up while your muscles are that stretched when you're bending down. Well, Jessica and Ella are both right in a way. Look at Chris. When he first bends over, all his weight is in his feet and he can straighten up easily. But when he takes a step back, his centre of gravity shifts and some of the weight moves to his head. This means his tummy muscles aren't strong enough to straighten himself up. Chris is still stuck. Should we let him up? No! Son! I've got a much better idea. Why don't we just use Chris as a nice new bookshelf? Son! <laughs> Can't even read the books. That's brilliant. If anyone needs a book, they're over there. <laughs>